All right, guys. At the moment, we've got a bit of a pause in the work on the L405 because we're waiting for some bits to turn up to get the engine back together. Um, I decided that all the footage I've shot for building the challenge truck is a bit monotonous to watch because it's all been done in time lapse. What we've decided we're going to do is we're going to give you a bit of a walk around the vehicle so that you can see what we've done. We're going to record some better footage as we go. We will post the time lapse footage up in sort of small four or five minute segments. So if anyone does want to watch us go through the whole build, they can do. Okay, so this is a Whitbread uh, cage fabricated by um, Carl up in Wales. We picked it up, brought it back on a trailer and brought it in and obviously we needed to cut down the discovery chassis to make it fit so i removed pretty much all bracketry off the vehicle i still have some little brackets and things that i want to trim and clean up and remove but all of the main outriggers and things have all been taken off the majority of the chassis has been cleaned up i manufactured my own strut mounts because I've put 15 inch shocks on the back. I still need to put some braces in to, for diagonal strength. I haven't done it at the moment because I haven't decided how the fuel tank's going to sit in. That only arrived a couple of weeks back and I haven't really done a lot of work on it since they've turned up. So before I fitted the cage, I removed the engine. We cut all of the engine mounts off the chassis, which are down in here and we've moved them back and re-welded them on 10 inches further back the cross member at the back down here was originally mounted here we've now moved the gearbox cross member 10 inches further back to this point here the reason for moving the engine back uh, especially 10 inches to be precise is that means we can put the front prop on the back and the rear prop on the front. It should move the engine further back into the vehicle, hopefully giving us better balance when we're off-road. And it gives me loads of room up here to mount a great big winch. Um, nice big winch tray sat here on the floor, supplied by giggle pin. That's gonna be a fun job to fit. And once that's done, I have an overhauled uh, 8274 winch Normally your front shocks are mounted through your springs. I uh, decided in my infinite wisdom that I wanted more suspension travel on the front. So I bought 13 inch front shocks, um, 13 inch travel front shocks, standard Land Rover ones are nine. Um, plus two and plus five don't actually give you that much more travel. Um, I've now got a full 13 inches of travel on these, this suspension and it lifts immensely, it's, it's really impressive. I'm not sure how it's going to cope when we get prop shafts on the, end, on the gearbox. It might be a, pa a fact that they uh, detach, so I may have to actually restrict the movement because it might be too much at the moment. But that's something to deal with when we come to the rolling vehicle stage and when it's actually driving. I've still got some framework to finish on the front here. Not quite sure where I'm going to decide to actually fit it to. It's supposed to be built with a discovery steering column, but I've taken a Defender steering column and butchered it about a little bit, um, taking it down here through the roll cage. Might not be the best way to do it, but it looks quite neat. Um, hopefully it'll be nice and strong. So we've taken the shaft through. So one of the first jobs that we built on the vehicle was the pedal box. We've used the Discovery pedal box and retrofitted it into a bit of bent sheet. So I bent up a rear sec a back section 
in the area where I went wanted the pedal box to be. And then I cut out a hole to match the shape of the pedal box. Pedal box is it's quite straightforward. It's a flat panel, holds the throttle cable, the brake servo and the clutch master cylinder. And it's held in with a number of bolts around it. So it wasn't too much of a job to cut square out and work out where best to sight it. Also gave me an idea of where to mount the steering column because the original hole from the pedal box is there. But after faffing around trying to fit a Discovery one, I thought the Fender one was more appropriate for me because the Discovery one has the adjuster in here. Um, I'm not exactly small, so my knees were smashing on things here. So I removed it out, fitted the Land Rover column that I got laying about, and just bent up a nice little bracket to support that. And that's just a, a standard pipe clamp with a hole drilled out to match the steering column. Long term, I intend to build some sort of dashboard around to enclose a couple of dials, the start stop switch, etc. Um, gearbox tunnel is just a nice piece of aluminium cut to length, folded up. Just some holes cut in it to do the transmission tunnel, which they'll get trimmed up and finished at a later date. Got a couple of old scrap valve actuating handles. I'm going to try and um, work them in with some brake master cylinders to give us some fiddle brakes. They'll be mounted in at some point in the future. I've decided I'm not going to fit copper brake lines and I'm going to fit a braided hose all around because I can route it anywhere I want and it's nice and easy to secure and it's going to be strong and durable and it means I'll be able to modify it and take it into the different areas that I want when it comes to it. With the rear suspension I've installed adrenaline 4x4 Johnny jointed rear arms these two here the trailing arms so we don't have the bush and pin at the front we have a full uh, joint and um, when I lifted this up on the car lift we had the full 15 inches of travel on the shot and a lovely movement across the whole vehicle um, almost vertical on the axle when it was a full cross axle uh, I fitted a adrenaline 4x4 rear A-frame and this has a ball joint knuckle on the top here which should just give us more travel but again until I get a prop shaft fitted and trial it I don't know how much travel we'll actually get that's going to be reliable and not drop a prop out so I may have to look at alternative props in the long run and I may just um, shorten the travel down one day when we were traveling over to come and do some work over here, it was a big bang. Um, we were traveling my um, lad's discovery. Uh, we pulled up and it was clunking every sort of rotation of a wheel. So I decided that, yeah, you probably had a diff let go. So once we got here, uh, we decided to jack it up and have a look. And yeah, it was definitely his diff. As you can see, it's lost the main cross pin that goes straight through it, uh, wedged into the, the crown wheel here and jammed it up. So we decided to rob the diff off the challenge truck to get his vehicle back up and running so that he could get home. So that I could get home really, because he drove me over that night. Used the diff off this, that got him back up and running. And now we're just waiting on Tom to replace my diff. I need to close up the rear of the chassis. This is where we cut the chassis off before mounting the cage on it. So I've got to do the final welding round here mount. Uh, I've actually mounted the bump stop, so I didn't realize I'd already done that. So this is where the chassis was cut off for the works. I've had to do some plating in different places. <laughs> I've had to do some repairs because of rot but they've all been removed and cleaned up now um, 
So we're just going to have to close the back of the chassis up, top and bottom. <laughs> 